My name is Philippe Fauché. I'm the Dean of the School of Engineering here at Vanderbilt University. Federal dollars are really essential for us in academia because we do research that is very often too early for industry to pick up. And funds coming from the federal government, whether it's the National Science Foundation, the National Institutes of Health, or any other agency, allows our students and our researcher to develop new ideas, new technologies, and then we can look at what is possible with industry, but we need that first step. We have a few faculty members who have teamed together to develop very flexible needle that can be used by medical doctors in detecting, for example, lung cancer. And that has been funded by NIH, and now it has led to the creation of a startup company right here in Nashville, where researchers, some faculty members, and others are trying to develop an actual product based on this. And it would have a fantastic impact on the well-being of hundreds of thousands of patients who have to undergo biopsy, for example. Our Institute for Software Integrated System, which is really composed of students, researchers and professors in computer science and electrical engineering, our institute has been developing a lot of open source software that can really integrate together proprietary software developed by different companies so that they can talk to one another. Imagine, for example, in the aerospace industry, you have the electronic software developed by company A, you have the mechanical software by company B and so forth. They have to talk together so that your airplane flies. Or in, a medic in the uh, hospital where you have a patient who has had surgery and he or she is connected to multiple machines that measure vital signs, these machines are made by different manufacturers. They have different proprietary software. Right now, a nurse very often is to write down by hand what the reading is. Imagine the possibility of errors as opposed to now this open source software that our institute has been developing can actually have all those machines talk to one another and develop a comprehensive monitoring of the patient. A number of years ago, we were funded by the National Science Foundation and the Department of Defense to look at very sophisticated, advanced nanoelectronic devices, and we were pushing the technology. And in doing so, we accidentally discovered that when we were making super thin layers of a material called silicon, naturally, it came out with small holes in them totally unanticipated, was not very good for the research of that graduate student at that time. And then we decided to turn a lemon into lemonade. We said, what can we do with this? And those holes are so small and their size is so precise that those very thin layers can be used to filter things like water or more importantly, blood. So the big proteins would be stuck, the small one would pass through. This is exactly what's happening in dialysis. People who have renal failure need to have their blood cleaned periodically, and this would allow us to do it very cheaply, about a thousand times faster because our technology is a thousand times thinner. And in fact, it is currently in development with big animals. We are not quite yet on the human, but we are there. And I think it holds a huge promise for people on dialysis so that they wouldn't have to be tied to a machine where they have to spend half a day, twice a week. They would actually have portable, implantable device that would clean their blood continuously. Super exciting. Congress in the United States has been very good at supporting basic and applied research that we conduct in universities, especially in schools of engineering. And the reason it is very important that this support continues is because we are exploring ideas that are not quite ready for industry yet. Industry does not want to spend the money, does not even sometimes think that this is a possibility. We are more free to conduct research that has not an immediate goal. 
our goal maybe 5, 10, 15 years from now. And so this is a way of creating the new knowledge, the new technology that will keep our country the leader in technology in general. Students who graduate from the School of Engineering at Vanderbilt have really no problem finding a job. Of course, today is a good time for engineering science and technology. But in general, an engineering degree or a computer science degree is something of very high value. These are highly qualified people that go and join the marketplace. Our undergraduate students go to a very wide range of positions. Some of them are very hardcore engineering positions in manufacturing, in software development, and other students move very quickly to a different environment, the consulting environment. For example, many of the consulting, of course, is done for technology-based companies, but many of our graduate students, 10 years after graduation, tend to be in decision-making positions. They those that start as engineers very quickly graduate to a much higher position, decision-making vice president, they create their own company because we have equipped them with the knowledge, not simply the technical and mathematical and physical knowledge, but also knowledge about economics, knowledge about the arts and humanities, which are really important to make a well-rounded engineer. The doctoral students and the master's students who graduate from Vanderbilt University, and especially our School of Engineering, are in very high demand by industry. Um, industry is looking for highly qualified people who have developed a very strong expertise in a specific domain and we provide that to industry. To speak about my own students, I think the last 10 or 15 PhD students I graduated got a job without me even talking to the companies because they are in such a high demand. If, you're, if the students that we produce are well prepared and they do important things, this is noted, and industry hires them. And it is not just industry, it is also government labs, and it can also be higher education. Vanderbilt University is a private university, but we are and we live in Tennessee, and we are part of the fabric of Tennessee. So a good fraction of our Master students, PhD students, and especially undergraduate students, once they graduate, stay in Tennessee, many in Middle Tennessee, but some in other places in Tennessee, and contribute to the economic development of the state. This is something that we have been emphasizing more and more as the technology base, the information science base in Tennessee increases. We see a higher percentage of our own graduates stay in Tennessee and deploy their expertise for the good of the state. So the School of Engineering receives a good amount of support from the federal government, from multiple different agencies, from the Department of Defense, the National Science Foundation, NASA, the National Institutes of Health, and other agencies. And this is really important, of course, to conduct the research that will improve the position of this country and the state of Tennessee, but also because we prepare the future leaders. In, in other words, students who do research in the lab as a sophomore or a junior, or graduate students who do their doctoral dissertation in our lab, they acquire the tool and they themselves will become the leader, the economic drivers of this country. They will create companies, they will be the st leading staff in existing companies, they are the economic engine. So we can say with 100% certainty that the money that the federal government spends on our research in the School of Engineering at Vanderbilt not only produces research results that impact the public, but also we produce the students who will be the next generation that will impact the public. Go doors.